So at this point, you know, you're, you're making a hundred racks a run a run takes uh, a few days. What are you telling your family you're doing for a living? Oh, what did I tell my family when I was in BMF that I did for a living? I told them I was in the music business. And because I had pictures with Nelly or Fabulous or Diddy or people seeing me at the club or something like that, they bought it. And plus I had limousines, so it was the perfect cover. So if I came in town and my family saw me with a limousine, it's just his limousine company. He's taking around his artists. Um, I've even taken some of my family strategically to the studio so they could see all of the rappers and all of this. So that they, I knew they were going to go back and tell the rest of my family, oh, I met this person, I met that person. So I had to keep the cover. And plus, I always had cars because I had a limousine company and I had a valet parking business. The music was a natural transition. So my family, to, until I got sentenced, my mother didn't know what I did. Like she just, I picked her up in the limo and she told me, I would make sure when my mother came in town, I'd put on my uniform and I'd go work at the valet spot and then I'd eat dinner with her and I'd have my friend take her home. So you now your, your job is never to have your family worry and it's also to stay away from your family too. So. How did you earn the nickname Miles? Uh, but it couldn't call me. I earned the nickname Miles because I didn't care what storm, what time, what police was out, what whatever, I was about getting the bag from A to B. So was, you can't say, hey, hey Jabari, you know, you can't put your government name out there when you're on the phone. So it was the nickname, it was kind of a nerd nickname that fit me. And it was the, the actual miles that I put on the road, like, um, and that I was relentless. I took the same, attributes that made me an all-American athlete in track and field. Um, and I took that to driving. And so I would drive cross country doing a speed limit in a limo and stop maybe three times for a half hour, but I would be so hyped and so wide open internally. I didn't, I hated no-dos and all of that stuff. And it was impressive because people didn't do the person out, in track and field, you always think about PBs, personal bests or PRs, personal records. I always wanted the record for the most kilos. I always wanted the record for the safest driving, not getting busted from point A to point B. I also wanted to be the driver that took the most money. I always wanted more and more and more to separate myself from any other drivers. So it was a competition thing for me. So that's how they gave me the name Miles. What does it feel like to have millions of dollars or hundreds of keys in your vehicle? At that time, it felt like just Monday or today is Thursday. It just felt like Thursday. Um, it is in the beginning. It's like when you see a million dollars, it's like that first time you have sex or the first time you see that naked woman and she's willing to have sex with you. And you like, I'm going to have sex with this beautiful being. And it just stick you until somebody like, hey, what the fuck you doing, man? Come on, man. We got to wrap this shit up. And you snap in. Or the, fir the first time you see 100 kilos of cocaine, you will never be the same. Because if you're in a business, everybody want to hustle to get one, five, or 10, or maybe 50. But when you see 100, they bruised, battered, and scarred. And they oblong. Some of them are half. Some of them are two. Some of them are one. Some of them busted open. Some of them got the V in it because they tested the cocaine. And you looking at it like, this is fucking incredible. Like, it is it's weird because it becomes like this furniture right here. It's just part of the job. But you know this furniture is valuable. You know that people are trying to kill you for it. And they 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 willing to give their lives for this furniture. But is unless you see like a thousand or ten thousand at a time, it just doesn't impress you anymore. But in the beginning, you stuck. It's like you were literally. You remember that first time you had sex? You remember the first time you ever bust that nut? And you was it was like incredible. First time you see a million dollars, you feel a hundred kilos of cocaine. It's nothing like it in the world, and you just you kind of you speechless, because in the beginning you know that this is a life sentence. You know that 
everybody could, you think could go to jail, right? You like, what, what, it's like you, you stuck for a second, but then it just becomes muscle memory. It's just work, you know? So that first time is a, he has a doozy. Mm. It's like when you see it at the point in which you see it, you realize all things are possible. It is, it's almost a euphoric feeling mm -hmm. when you see it because you know everything that you get ready to do from now on has changed. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like almost like a, you know, that NBA player or NFL player becomes a, a draft pick and you know the trajectory of your life has changed. When you see that work, you're like, man, everything's different now. My whole thought pattern. I ain't thinking starter homes. I ain't thinking million dollar homes or home. You thinking multi-million dollar houses on each coast and like anything you could ever want. Like it's, it's nothing with that money and that work is nothing on this earth that you can't buy. How many successful runs did you do? How many successful runs did I do? I really don't know. Um, yeah, I have, I stopped counting because at what point I think it was after 50, I stopped counting because with BMF, people don't understand as much as you want to drive, they got as much work for you. It's never a shortage of work. There's never a shortage of kilos of cocaine or millions of dollars for BMF. As Meech told the Connect one time, they asked the Connect asked Meech, well, how many can you do? He said, how many can I do? He told the Connect, a cartel, not just a, somebody selling. He said, you ain't got enough. You bring 10,000, I'm going to sell 10,000. You bring 100,000, I'm going to sell 100,000. You ain't got enough. And he meant it too. So I, what, when, when you're driving from BMF, they're going to give you, you're going to be all you can be. And they only, they, they stopped me a couple of times because I was delirious. One time my personal record is I did um, Atlanta to California, back to California and back um, with only six hours of straight sleep. And that, that was the time where they were like, all right, you need to take a rest because I did it in under a week. And this was balls against the wall, straight driving. It's use the restroom, uh, get something to eat, sleep. As soon as your body is up, they done already got the car washed up, the limo. They done got everything back together and you going. Because this is a 4,600 mile round trip. Yeah. I was, I was so delirious that they asked me, they were like, hey, hey, put 10, 10 bricks over there. And I think I put 12. I was so, my body was, I was beyond failure. I, that, it, that, that On the road, that's the first time I ever fell asleep with my eyes open. I hallucinated so much um, that I first started having one person in the car in my imagination. And then as the, like the third leg of that trip is when I had a second person in the car. And it was just... I was way, way, way out there. So they, they sat me down that time. And I think that's the, the only time they ever said, hey, you got to stop. You got to stop. So, yeah. But in BMF, is never enough. You, we work on speed. And when I talk about Walmart, how Walmart crushed Kmart is volume. It's volume. Y'all sell 50 T-shirts at a dollar profit. We're going to sell 1,000 at 50 cent profit. We're going to sew up the whole market and not fire one shot. That run that you did, that back-to-back, -back, that's when I remember starting to call you Miles. Mm. Yeah. That run. Yeah. 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 How involved were you in the preparation for a run? <sighs> I was involved in the preparation for a run 
when it came to that work or that money going into that car? Because how involved though? Did you personally I, place the money or the material into the vehicle, into the stash compartment? Depending on who was loading up the cars, that's when I became involved. When two people, I'll keep them out of this, but when they became involved, I almost never went over their work. Everybody else, it was because I was the Alpha and Omega in that car. Everything started with me, everything ended with me. So this car had to be right because my life was on the line. That little, when you trying to force it in the car and it cuts that kilo that's duct taped and it goes down, that could put this car, this work, me at risk. Now I'm gone, the car's gone, the work is gone, we gotta get lawyers and everything else. So I was involved with it um, when it wasn't my crew, because people think BMF was all of these hundreds of people, but it was a small core group of us that actually did the work and that just weren't witnesses or just hanger-ons or just trying to party. It was a small core of us that people, they, they don't really get it because with so many people around that are flashy and all the rest of this, you don't know who's who. So it was kind of like a uh, smoke and mirrors, but this core group, when they were loading, they were counting, never had any issues. And what was your um, system to go through, like your, your checklist of things before you actually pulled off with the bread or the work? My checklist before I drove off started before I left, it started with great rest. It started with making sure all of the IDs, making sure all of the tags were straight, making sure the, one of the number one things is making sure those lights over that license plate were good. Because you drive cross country and you're not stopping, you're gonna drive at night. One of the biggest things that they wanna pull you over for is those lights, that those two little lights that go on the side or above the license plate. They could pull you over, you weren't driving erratic, everything checked out, but because of that, and it's happened to me before, they can. So it started with great rest. It started with good food in my stomach, not to be gross or crass, but taking and doing a number two, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I didn't want to take number twos in the gas stations, right? Or didn't want to stop at any hotels. But you're watching people as they're loading up the work before it goes into the car. Then you're watching them from the other side as they're, they're doing it. You're also seeing what type of cleaning materials are they taking. If they've got the ammonia or the bleach, is it too loud? You can't walk inside of a limo and it smell like ammonia and bleach. They automatically know that you didn't wash the car down. So you gotta use certain things and you're also checking the spot. You're checking it, is it like in different vehicles, the, the actuators, the arms that open up that the actuator actuates it to open up and the arms push it from wherever it's going. You're making sure that these aren't making any noise, that they're lubed up. The sequence of events that you need to open up the spot, that the spot isn't staying open too long just in case you got to open it, you got to close it. You're making sure that on that limousine that that gap is filled. You feeling around, you going in between the seats because you learn like it's Monday People trying to go to Magic City, they leave $5,000 in the champagne bucket. You know what I mean? So you going through the car, checking it. You taking little um, napkins and folding it in the cup hole in the cups because that's what limousines do. Everything has to fit what a limousine looks like. The smell has to be right. The carpet has to be right. The the little treats that you have in a car have to be right. You, If it's a limousine, they're gonna have some waters or something else in the car. Everything from the trunk, your tire needs to be in the same place because you know the police are always looking at the spare tire to see if it's being, if there's any work in there. So everything, and you also checking, making sure you got your insurance, making sure you got your registration, making sure you got your license, practicing where you going, how you going, who you going to see, all of these things. You have to anticipate the questions that law enforcement will ask you. So what were some of the sequences to actuate the stash, the opening and closing of the stash, opening, say opening the stash? The sequence for opening up the stash, I'll give a couple because it might be some cars out there. Um, 
you had to, you could be in park or you could be in drive, but you had to roll down the uh, window for the back, <clears throat> the shade that goes in the limo. You had to roll it down. Then you had to put the defroster on. Then you could start it and then you could start driving, but you couldn't open it without the, um, with the car um, driving. And then what would happen is the back seat would go and it'd open. And then you'd have to do another sequence because the is a aircraft grade aluminum, so it's lighter, right? And so the 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 compressors compress all of the air out because the dog smells the air, the molecules of air from the cocaine or the money that was near the cocaine that is cocaine on the money. So the compartments are sealed shut, right? And so now, Airtight. just because, yeah, just because you can get to them doesn't mean that you can open them. So now you got to hit another button for it to decompress. And now it decompresses. Now, but you can't rush it. Now when it decompresses, then you can open up the tanks and get the work out. But if I'm looking at the car, I know what to look for. Because you got to think if you got 100 kilos, 2.2 pounds per kilo, right? That's an extra 220 pounds. If you really looked at the car, I know that the car is off a little bit on the left because that's where the work is, right? The driver's on that side and there's that side. And if you look at limos, most limos that are J with the cross right here, J style limos, if the people on this side, that's the side of the lean too slightly, so you're looking at that like, is it too much? Is it too off? You're looking at champagne buckets. You're looking at the carpet. A crumb could be when they took it out the bag, that crumb hit the ground and they put it in the spots. But that crumb, I've actually tasted crumbs and my numb, my tongue started getting numb <laughs> because it was cocaine. Now we got to start the whole process. I'm going to fuck everybody else. We cleaning this whole car. We taking these mats out the whole nine yards because now my life and this money and this work is in danger. So it's been times where we had to redo the whole cars, clean the whole cars because this was my life. This was my job. You got one job. Do your job well.